All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome into episode two of the draft target series for the New York Jets. Episode one was done a couple weeks ago, and we covered Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal, Kenyon Green, Tyler Linderbaum, and then, of course, Kyle Hamilton, the uh, safety from Notre Dame. In this one, we have five more prospects to go over, five guys that I'm really, really excited about. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in. So player number one is actually one of my favorite players in college football. It's safety from Michigan, Daxton Hill. Coming in at six foot 192, Dax Hill is my type of football player, my type of safety. A long, lanky, athletic, explosive ball hawk safety, but at the same time is not shying away from contact. He's really aggressive, especially in the short pat defending against the short passing game. He could cover tight ends. He always he has a knack for finding the football, whether it's an interception, whether it's a pass defense. I really, really like Dax Hill. He's a guy that I feel like has a huge ceiling, but also if you draft him, he can make that day one impact. Uh, funny enough, he's actually coached by one of my favorite coaches in college football, Mike McDonald, the uh, defensive coordinator for the Wolverines, a guy who could be a head coach in the near future. But man, Dax Hill, you take a look at how he fits into this New York Jets system. You know, the cover four, cover three system that Salah runs, I feel like his speed, his super smooth backpedal, and then of course his burst will allow Hill to blanket the deep parts of the field while also making an impact in the running game because he can come up so effectively. Uh, you take a look at his numbers in 2021, they are, I mean, they are really, really good. In nine games this season, he has 48 total tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, two picks, and six passes defended against. Keep in mind, we're still in the middle of the season here. We still have a handful of games left. So Dax is all over the field. I'm a big Daxton fan. You take a look at this Jets safety room right now. Marcus May, yeah, he's out for the year, and he's probably going to be playing for a new squad next season. As sad, as unfortunate as that sounds, it's just the reality of the situation. That's just the world that we're living in today. LaMarcus Joyner also out for the year, and he only signed a one-year contract to begin with. Personally, I don't feel comfortable as Ashton Davis has a long-term building block moving forward, so I would be all in if the New York Jets, if Joe Douglas and his defense wants to draft a guy from Ann Arbor and Daxon Hill. Player number two, tight end from Coastal Carolina, Isaiah Likely. Six foot four, 240, Isaiah Likely has been a matchup problem for the past four seasons. Defensive coordinators have had a have had a very difficult time trying to slow down Likely. And of course, we have to credit Chadwell, uh, Jamie Chadwell, the head coach of Coastal. He does a great job with that offense, tons of innovation. They do a really, really good job of developing players as well, putting players in the in the in great positions to have success. But Isaiah Likely can really hurt you deep down the field in the intermediate game, in the short passing game. He's built more so like a David and Joku, like a Kyle Pitts, as opposed to the traditional style of tight end like a Tyler Croft or a Ryan Griffin. So he does give you that athleticism. He gives you that explosiveness for the tight end position. He gives you a big body. He gives you a red zone threat. He gives you a big catch radius. He gives you a guy that, again, can hurt you at all three facets of the pass game. And look, I mean, this offense, they run, they, they get the tight ends involved. In fact, Mike LaFleur actually said he needs to call more plays. For the tight end i'm looking at this tight end room right now it's a weak spot this is a weak spot for the team and they're still trying to get it involved if we can get talent in this room if we can inject some talent some big time talent guys with high upsides i really feel like the sky's the limit zach wilson has definitely shown a tendency to get the tight ends involved more um so i, I think isaiah likely could be a slam dunk for this jets offense and one more thing I did want to add about Isaiah Likely is that he's consistent and he continues to get better with every passing season. In nine games this season, he has 37 catches, 632 yards with eight touchdowns. Okay, so he gets involved. He's a big part of the offense. Defenses have a very tough time slowing him down and he gets in the end zone. Bottom line, he scores points for Coastal. Frankly, that's just something that the Jets offense um, struggles with. Okay, in the grand majority of the season, last couple weeks we've put up some points, but in the grand majority, the Jets have struggled to put up points. Keep an eye on Isaiah Likely. Player number three, everybody's favorite cornerback, Derek Stingley out of LSU. At six foot one, 195, Derek Stingley is truly the prototype at the cornerback position. He provides size, speed, technique, production, versatility, uh, ball skills, whatever you want. Derek Stingley has pretty for the most part. He has battled with injury, but Derek Stingley, really from day one, going back to high school, 
he's been great. He's been dominant. I mean, he's the number one player in Louisiana, five-star recruit goes to LSU, and the guy did not disappoint. You take a look at 2019, his freshman season at LSU, where he played in 15 games, he had 38 tackles, six picks, and 15 passes defended against in the SEC, again, as a freshman. Okay, so this guy can play. I did skip over 2021 just because he's, again, been hurt for the majority of the season. And then 2020 was the virus year. But all in all, Derek Stingley, I mean, you want to talk about just a, a, a complete cornerback prospect, a guy who could play in man, he could play in zone, he could play in a bunch of different defenses, uh, and will be a first-round pick, barring, you know, some crazy, crazy injury, barring anything off the field. Derek Stingley, the consensus number one corner. Of course, you take a look at this Jets uh, corner room. Bryce Hall has been playing great, great football. I love Michael Carter. I think Eccles has actually done a pretty good job these last couple of games as well. He's coming along. But Derek Stingley truly gives the Jets that top five, top ten corner potential in the league. Day one as a rookie, Derek Stingley has that Jalen Ramsey gene. He has that Stephon Gilmore uh, style of gene where he could be you know, a marquee star in the NFL. And of course, we do have to bring up the argument, you know, whenever you're drafting a cornerback, top 10, top 15, somewhere in that range, you have to be sure. Because cornerbacks, let's face it, you could get them anywhere. You can get them in free agency. You know, JC Jackson, one of my favorite players in the NFL, he's set to hit the open market. So, I mean, if the Jets were to sign him, you know, you could get some production there. Then you can use one of your first round picks on another you know, on another player, tight end, guard, whatever you want to do. You could draft corners in the middle rounds, in the later rounds, undrafted. You could trade for guys that fit the system. There's a lot of good corners available every single year. So if you're taking one in round one, you have to be sure he's going to be the next star. The next Trey White, Jair Alexander, Jalen Ramsey, to name a couple of, you know, successful first round picks. The next Revis. You never want to be on the back end or, or you know, the wrong end rather. You know, D Milner, Kyle Wilson, Eli Apple. Look, look at what's happening in Detroit right now. Jeff Okuda, third overall pick, and it's not working out. Like, you're taking a corner third overall, and he's, you know, barely on the field. Injuries, just it's just a bad situation. So, cornerback, you can make that argument. They're kind of a dime a dozen, but that aside, Derek Stingley, he sure looks like a lock to be a very, very good NFL player. Player number four, we're going back to the tight end position, Texas A&M, Jalen Weidermeyer. Six foot five, 255, Jalen has been very, very consistent. You take a look at the head coach of the Aggies. It's Jimbo Fisher, a guy that runs a, an extremely complex system, a pro style system, an old school system that puts a lot of responsibility on the tight end position. Jalen has not disappointed at all. In nine games this season, Weidermeyer has 30 catches, four touchdowns, 406 receiving yards. He's a beast in the red zone. He's a good blocker. He is fearless. He's not afraid to go over the middle. He is not afraid of contact. He can, much like Isaiah Likely, hurt you down the field in the intermediate game and in the short game as well. But I really feel like in the short passing game, that's where he really shines on those bootlegs in, you know, quick little curl routes, quick little easy five yard gains. That's really where the Jets have used the tight ends this season. I mean, we're not sending these guys down the field, you know, up the seams like, you know, Gronkowski and whatnot back in his heyday with New England. But you could, of course, make the argument. We just don't have the talent to do that. To do that. So if we add a guy like Weidermeyer, not only would he fit the system, not only would he give us some more talent and some more depth at the tight end position, but he would give us a legitimate threat at the position, both in the pass game and run game. He is smart, high football IQ, good size, big catch radius, again, much like likely. Although, by the way, production in the SEC as well, it would be huge for this offense. He would come in and immediately be the team's best option at the tight end position. And last but not least, player number five on this list, one of my favorites in college football right now, linebacker from Utah, Devin Lloyd. Coming in at six foot three, 232 pounds, Lloyd is long, lanky, a true modern day linebacker. Okay, he could drop in coverage, he could come up and stop the run, he could rush the passer, he's a good tackler, he plays with a tremendously high motor. Huge motor, a lot of effort, a lot of passion, the heartbeat of the Utes defense. He's received excellent coaching from Whittingham, a guy who's known for developing defense players, getting the most out of his defensive players. He's versatile. He can line up at middle linebacker. He can line up at outside linebacker. He has the size to do both effectively. 
I really, really like Lloyd. I feel like he's being a little over... I don't want to say over... Yeah, I guess he is o overlooked a little bit. And funny enough, he actually reminds me a lot of a linebacker prospect that came out of the state of Utah just a couple seasons ago. Okay, a guy that has the same size, same strengths, same weaknesses, plays with a lot of effort, a lot of energy, brings that same versatility to the table, can line up at multiple linebacker positions... A guy that's truly built for the modern day NFL might be a little raw, might need to add a little bit of muscle to the frame. Fred Warner, a guy that's worked with Robert Sala, a former third round pick out of BYU. Devin Lloyd, to me, has a lot of the same traits. A lot of the same traits. Nobody's really talking about Devin Lloyd as some top 10, top 15, top 20 draft pick. But that back end of the first round, round two, Devin Lloyd can make some noise there. I feel like you you add a guy like that to this Jets linebacking core, a linebacker core that frankly has been banged up this season. C.J. Mosley has missed time. Gerard Davis has missed the first chunk of the season. Jamie Sherwood is out for the year. Thompson Dean hurt and missed a lot of time. I mean, this line, Blake Cashman out for the year. This linebacking core, we need some help. I like the younger guys on this team. I like Sherwood a lot. Of course, I like C.J. Mosley, one of the best linebackers in the league, but if we can add a guy like Devin Lloyd to this football team, I feel like it would I feel like it would truly give Robert Sala not only just a, you know a nice talented position at the linebacker spot, but a guy that you can build the defense around, a guy that would not only just bring, you know, athleticism and versatility to the table, but he would bring a winning attitude. This guy puts winning above everything else. You listen to him in interviews, he's a great great leader. Just a guy you want to play with. You want to play four. You want to you want to root for, for you want to root for a guy in Devin Lloyd. So those are the five prospects in episode two. Of course, episode three is going to be coming at some point. I uh, just wanted to watch some more college tape and, and you know just digest some more weeks of college football. Uh, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. How do you like these prospects? Are there any guys that you know you have your eye on specifically that not many people are talking about? I would love to hear them. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always. Go Jets.